The views and opinions in this program are not those of CESA 7 or Spectrum. Providing two different opportunities during tonight's meeting to speak before the board. All speakers must fill out a form indicating their desire to speak, and those are on the table um, just outside the door. If you wish to speak during tonight's open forum, you may do so with respect to items that are posted on tonight's agenda or any other matter you wish to share with the board. Please know that Wisconsin's open meetings law pro prohibits the board from conducting business on matters brought during this open forum. The board will also permit public participation during agenda items that the Board of Education will be voting on as noted on the board's agenda. During this public participation time, consistent with state and federal laws, board members may engage in dialogue with the speakers. In order that all voices are heard, the board will suspend engagement until all speakers have had a chance to speak. Please keep your comments to five minutes. The timekeeper will let you know when your five minutes has ended. Prior to starting your comments, please provide your name and address. Lastly, demonstrations during public comments such as clapping or cheering in response to either public comments or statements made by the board members are prohibited. Also, members of the public can view the board agenda and handouts as well as minutes from prior meetings by visiting the district website at www.gbaps.org. Click on our district and then board of education. On the left menu, you will find a link to agendas and minutes. This link will take you to a website called Neptune, where all board agendas, minutes, and handouts from board meetings are housed. At this point, I would open the uh, special board meeting, uh, entertain the first motion. I move that Murin Construction be awarded the bid for general construction referendum work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $1,459,475 as presented be approved. Second. Any questions? Sandy? Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Carried 6-0. I move that Johnson and Janet Mechanical be awarded the bid for plumbing referendum work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $71,890 as presented be approved. Seconded. Sandy? McCoy? Aye. Becker? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikon? Aye. Warren? Aye. Thorpe? Aye. Carried 6-0. I move that A&J Mechanical be awarded the bid for mechanical HVAC referendum work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $210,339 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Becker? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Carried 6-0. I move that Elon Electric be awarded the bid for electrical referendum work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $149,987 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Warren? Aye. Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Dork? Aye. Carried 6-0. I move that IEI general contractors be awarded the bid for general construction energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $271,616 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. Thor? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Becker? Aye. Carried 6-0. I move that for Halen Incorporated be awarded the bid for acoustical ceiling energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $32,401 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Mm -hmm. McCoy? Aye. <clears throat> Dorf? Aye. Becker? Aye. Warren? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikow? S abstain. Carried five uh, ayes to one abstention. 
I move that August Winter and Sons be awarded the bid for plumbing energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $132,680 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Sitnikow? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Becker? Aye. Carried 6 0. I move that A&J Mechanical be awarded the bid for mechanical energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $699,041 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Warren? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Carried 6 0. I move that Herkman Mechanical Industries be awarded the bid for mechanical and plumbing insulation energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $170,782 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. Dork? Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Carried 6-0. I move that Elon Electric be awarded the bid for electrical energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $114,452 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? McCoy? Aye. Becker? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Warren? Aye. Torf? Aye. Carried 6 0. I move that Vanden Heuvel Electric be awarded the bid for lighting energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $136,780 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Becker? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Torf? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Carried 6 0. I move that Land Electric be awarded the bid for low voltage energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $70,425 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Warren? Aye. Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Dork? Aye. Carried 6 0. I move that Badger Balancing be awarded the bid for testing and balancing <coughs> energy conservation work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $12,900 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. Thorpe? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Becker? Aye. Carried 6 0. I move that Northern Metal and Roofing Incorporated be awarded the bid for roofing replacement work at Webster Elementary School in the amount of $766,590 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? McCoy? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Becker? Aye. Warren? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Carried 6 0. I move that Zyze Construction be awarded the bid for general construction work at Martin Luther King Elementary School in the amount of $139,222 is presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Sitnikow? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Becker? Aye. Carried 6 0. <coughs> I move that CESA 7 be contracted to tape the April 9th, 2018 Board Superintendent Retreat at a cost of $450 plus the cost of closed captioning per contract, $150 per hour billed in 15 minute increments for anything less than an hour after the first hour as presented be approved. Second. And um, before we start our discussion, I just am curious if there's anybody who would like to speak to this matter, just so I know to call on you. All right, then we will um, uh, open it up with questions or comments. Okay. Sandy? Becker? Aye. McCoy? <clears throat> Dorf? Aye. Warren? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Carried 6 0. So um, I'll move to adjourn the special meeting. Second. second. Or I mean, I'm entertaining so the motion. Thank you. So moved. Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll restart our regular board meeting at 5 30. to call this uh, board work session to order. First, we'll begin with our open forum. And I have one person who's registered to speak, and I'll uh, call up Mark Freeberg. Good afternoon. 
afternoon. My name is Mark Freeberg, and I'm here today as a member of the Wisconsin <coughs> Urban Forestry Council. The purpose of the council is to advise the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources on the best ways to preserve, protect, expand, and improve Wisconsin's urban and community forest resources. The Forestry Council presents annual awards to outstanding individuals, organizations, <coughs> communities, and tribes that further urban forestry in Wisconsin. Part of the Green Bay Area Public Schools mission is to educate all students to be college, career, and community ready. For the past 50 years, the Green Bay Area Public Schools have partnered with the City of Green Bay and the Village of Galloway to distribute tree seedlings to the grade school children of Green Bay. The program was instituted to involve young people in an environmental experience that will help develop right attitudes and values and install a reverence for life. By giving each child their own tree, instructing them in the care of it, they become very protective of it. This stewardship attitude grows with the children and has a beneficial effect on their lives and eventually the community. Over the last 50 years, over 100,000 trees representing 27 species have been planted by the school children of Green Bay. Many of these trees thrive today and are often mentioned as a source of pride by the parents of the children who planted them. The many benefits these Arbor Day trees provide help enrich the lives of all people in the community and keep the green in Green Bay. It is my pleasure to present this year's Project Partnership Award to the Green Bay Area Public Schools. Job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Are you in the picture? Thank you. No? I get the tree in the background. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> I'm in front of the words. <laughs> That's okay. Well, the tree's what's important right now. That's right. Tuck in. This plaque is made from urban wood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right, I, um, we have six board members present this evening. One member is excused. I'm joined to my left by Dr. Michelle Langenfeld, our superintendent, and also to my far left, Sandy Heller, our board secretary, and around the table are members of the superintendent's cabinet. At this point, I'll t uh, we will begin our teaching and learning work session, and I'll turn that over to Ed Dorf, who will facilitate. Thank you. We have. Uh one item for discussion and public comment, and that is a report on the International Baccalaureate NYP authorization. And joining us tonight are Dr. Ho, Jackie Hauser, Chris Borden, and Michelle Jacobson, principals of the schools in which our International Baccalaureate program lies. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today about a very specific slice of the entire IB pie. Um, you may remember when uh, uh, Kim Pallow was with us, she would have oversight of IB program, and when Kim left, it was shifted over to me, and so I get to work now with Chris and Michelle and Jackie to implement a full IB program uh, in, in our schools. Uh, Chris has the, and I'm going to try to do the, uh, the names of things and not the abbreviations. We have a lot of abbreviations. Um, the primary years program, uh, sometimes referred to as PYP at Chapel Elementary School. The MYP middle years program at Franklin, and then the MYP and DP diploma program at West High School. So we represent all of those different programs. 
Um, I have a short slide presentation to help walk you through um, the specific uh, question for today that we have. And then uh, also be aware that uh, John is preparing a larger IB uh, update monitoring report uh, later on this year. So you might have some deeper questions that we'll get to uh, later on this, this year. So um, if you could advance the slide for me, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got it. Thank you very much. I will do that. Thank you. Maybe I won't. Oh, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, as I just mentioned, um, the IB full program consists of PYP, MYP, and DP. And as you can see on the screen, the MYP years go from 6th grade through 10th grade. And we have one piece that's not completed yet. And that's authorization for MYP <laughs> at grades 9 and 10 at West High School. And that's the very specific piece we're here to talk to you about today. Included in the board packet was a longer report um, from the authorizers of IB, International Baccalaureate. And there's one matter of the entire report that we needed to fix yet. And that's the matter uh, to be addressed, standard B210C. And it has to do with the concept of concurrency. And that's what we're going to talk about briefly today. Oops. So what is concurrency? So in MYP and in IB, um, the curriculum is comprised of eight subject areas. And they sound a little bit like what you're used to, but some of them sound a little different. And so they're on the screen. Language and literature would be similar to what you might think of as um, English language arts. Mathematics, of course, is an easy one. Science. Uh, individuals and societies corresponds with social studies. Language acquisition would be world languages. And then we've got arts, physical and health, and design. And through all the courses that we offer, um, we fit those different categories uh, of subject groups. And one of the requirements is that we have concurrency, meaning that the kids are involved in those subject areas throughout the entire school year. Now, at a middle school, it's a little easier because kids tend to have year-long courses. At the high school, they have semesterized courses. And if we're not really good about how we line up those semesterized courses, you might not have concurrency. A good example would be if a student has an art class that might count as uh, both semesters and then not have an art class a second semester. They'd have a lot of art one semester and none the other. We'd want to line that up so that it was concurrent throughout the, of the whole year. So that's the matter that we need to fix. Now we've recently um, addressed some of these issues like language acquisition, for example. Um, it recently became a concurrent and yearly requirement at West High School. We have language acquisition at uh, Franklin Middle School for their MYP program. And the last areas that, uh, of study that are electives that don't currently have a required year-long component are those pieces that we need to fix in ninth and 10th grade. And in order to do that, we have a couple of ideas. So we can create concurrency through matching current semester elective offerings. As the master scheduler at West High School, um, the administrators would have to make sure that when they build their master schedule, they line up those courses appropriately semester one and semester two so that kids have the option of taking those courses concurrently. And we don't have any situations where a course wouldn't be concurrent. That's one way to, to fix that problem. The other one is the possibility of creating and I was reminded by Mr. Dorf that we might not have to create one, but uh, a semester health and physical education course offerings that would happen over the course of the year. Excuse me, a sophomore health and physical education course. I think there used to be a course like that uh, in, our, in our course book, and so it might be as simple as dusting off that course and updating it for our current use. That could be a possible fix as well. Now, we're not bringing that course to you today or the idea of that course because that would be something that would happen through the teaching and learning process. Mike Fries and Eric Kahn would be responsible for doing all the work that goes into creating a course and bringing that to your attention down the road. Our ask of you is to simply endorse our continued authorization of MYP at 9th and 10th grade at West High School. The authorizers will come back to our district April 24th and they're going to want to know that the board is supportive of being authorized in MYP in 9th and 10th grade. And so 
next in two weeks when you meet again. Um, if you approve this, we'll be asking you to simply sign a letter of support by the uh, superintendent and the board president. We also have uh, our other Ivy friends in the back here. Uh, we've, they, they thought they'd come along if you had any specific questions about MYP authorization. Introduce uh, them, please. Yes. You want to introduce your staff? This is Renee Anderson. She is our MYP coordinator at uh, West High School. And then we have Shannon Preston, and she's the DP coordinator at West High School. And at Franklin, we have Jen Burgraff. She is our IB coordinator at Franklin, and especially as we go through our evaluation coming up Thursday and Friday this week. <laughs> Maybe explain the difference between what you're doing versus what we're doing with the authorization. Sure. Um, we've had, um, we've been an IB school now for five years, so IB now comes in and evaluates how we're doing, and they'll provide us with a report just like they've provided Wes with a report. Um, to look at things from when we were authorized the first time. Kind of like a progress report, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Questions? I don't, I don't have a question. I just want to say my daughter is at Franklin, and for whatever reason, she loves school again. And I'm not sure if it's Franklin or the IB program, but thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's both. <laughs> Uh, you had one um, one action item requested by IB, but you had um, several things that were commendations. So that's a finding. Um, if I understand this correctly, they look at an issue and then either like kind of a must do or recommendation or commendation. Is that, yeah, um, like we're doing really well. Work on this. You have to address this immediately. Okay, and it looks like a lot of times they'll put a, a recommendation in, but it's not anything too bad. But could you touch on, touch on just a couple of the uh, commendations uh, that we got throughout this? Yeah. Do you want to talk about that one? And I, this is my uh, third authorization to go through with an MYP school, and I've never seen so many accommodations ever in a report. They're usually quite stingy, so it was quite unusual. <laughs> Does anyone have a copy of the yeah. report? Okay. I have to read Your this first one here, though. First one here, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, I'm Renee Anderson, and I've been with the district now for a year and a half. I moved from across the planet to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure to work at the Green Bay Public School District. Thank you for having us tonight. I haven't seen this report for a while because we've been working on the matter to be addressed. So I just need to look over it again. And you can tell us which page you're looking at on the report. Sure. Well, I mean, I saw it throughout. Uh, the, it was that they kept. Let me. Um, <coughs> it's on the top of page ten. Um, and the bottom of page ten. Yeah. So there's the top of page ten about the the governing body and school leadership team, and I think yeah, this way was practice. Practice six, students describe the school as a diverse, caring, and open-minded learning community. That's, um, glad to hear that. Just wondering, how do they seek that out? Do they just informally? Well, actually, when the visitors came, they had a schedule, and one of the things that they must do is interview students, as well as uh, we organize them to guide the visitors around. <coughs> so they have informal conversations as well as they would have that um, formal, like I think it was a half an hour conversation with students where they have very geared questions. And uh, this theme kept coming up from the students and also from the parents. So they had a separate meeting with a few of our parents from West who had the same feeling about our school as being diverse and, um, and unique in that way at, in Green Bay. Okay, yeah, so this would be, and since this is, um, this is um, MYP, this isn't just interviewing a specific, like a specific set of people who enroll themselves into the diploma program, this is a cross section of people that are being cross section of kids and parents? That's a good a question. A wide cross section? Yes. Yes, and, and we geared it more towards the ninth and 10th graders because they are more involved in the MYP, but there was, for instance, a parent 
actually two parents who had seen uh, one, one student through the DP and also have an MYP student who came from Franklin now up to West High School, so. Okay, thank you. Oh, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to share this. I'm sure <laughs> that, or Jen, or both of you. So I'm a parent out there, and I'm thinking about IB, but my child is not at Franklin. But they're choosing a high school, and I still want IB. Can I do that? Can I enroll my child as a freshman in the IB program? And I'm asking this for people who are out there who may not know. If I didn't have a child go through chapel and I didn't have them go to Franklin, can, will my child be able to be successful in the MYP program? So I'm gonna answer one half of the question, I'll turn over to them. So um, any student in the district that wants to take advantage of a program in another school, um, we allow kids to request that through our interdistrict transfer process. And so all of those options are available to any student in the district. Now relative to the question about would they be prepared for MYP and DP, I'll turn that back for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll share something along that lines. Um, Chapel is one of the schools that feeds into Franklin, but we have seven schools all together. Um, so when students come to Franklin, every student at Franklin is part of the MYP program. So whether you've been at Chapel or you haven't been at Chapel, you become part of the Franklin MYP IB program. And what that does mean at times is that we need to um, continue some learning with the students who are new to us, um, but that's not a problem at all for us, so that would not be an issue for kids going into ninth grade. As well, any ninth or tenth grader at West will be part of the MYP program. It doesn't become till 11th and 12th grade when it's the DP program that um, a student would more or less have to apply for it um, and be accepted. I mean, I think that it's a very accessible program for especially at the ninth grade level because it um, also gives a, a very specific feedback to a student learning, which I think uh, any student coming into our school will will appreciate that. And, I, and I'm sure that other high schools are having various ways of doing this, but instead of you have an 80% and, and we leave it there, it is, this is, um, this is at the level that you seem to understand through these various ways we've assessed you, and I feel that that program becomes very accessible to any type of student learner. So it's very specific feedback that really helps the learner know what they know yes. and are able to do, and then you can help them raise them as well. So thank you. Are there any high schools that have IB programs alongside or? in collaboration with trimester schedules? Actually, uh, Michelle Jacobson used to work at one that did just that. Yeah, for the, it, it's, uh, the issue is you have to protect the concurrency of learning. So you have to make sure that through those three trimesters that students aren't changing at trimester to a different class. So it's similar to the issue we have now at semester when kids are able to change. And so you have to eliminate that, and otherwise you can totally have a trimester system. Brenda? Um, <coughs> piggybacking off of Andrew's question, the, the recommendations in here, are there, um, there's, a, there's a lot of them, and it, they're written such, I mean, some of them are written as if, you know, you take a look at this kind of thing. So are there, are there deadlines for that? Do you have to send? back your plan for all those recommendations or are those just sort of things to think about as you move forward? We have to write an action plan. For and each in, of those? Yeah, okay. and in our action plan we show over the next five years how we are going to address those recommendations. And then that action plan has to be written soon after your it's in, meeting? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so April 24th we're, is that, we're handing it in. And then we update it yearly according to what we've what you've done. And accomplished. Okay. We embed that into our school success plan so mm -hmm. that it all becomes one document. But that's where it's driven is through the, the feedback that we get from the IB organization <coughs> and our self study process that we've completed. So those may be um, attended to over the course of those five years, but you submit 
the whole five-year action plan as and to the timing of or or I guess your plan for for addressing the recommendations right. not necessarily timing. and then and then in five years if we're authorized they'll look at that action plan and they'll use that action plan to kind of say okay you accomplished this why didn't you do this you know so they'll go through it so it's it is a living document yeah, okay. we don't get to put it in a drawer and forget mm -hmm. about it okay know, thanks so. <laughs> Andrew, do you have another question? I, I did. Uh, Mrs. Jakesman, from your experience in other IB, what like what's a pretty good number of commendations that you would usually make an IB coordinator feel pretty good about things? Um, that's that's hard to say, but I would. I mean, I really haven't seen over three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think there's twelve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. And I think that says a lot about the level of experience and expertise we have in specific IB um, areas. Uh, you know, Ms. Jacobson was a principal in, in, or an administrator in an IB school in China. Um, Renee has worked overseas as well in IB schools, and our coordinators and our teachers and our staff really are bringing a world experience to our kids. It's really, it's really pretty impressive. So, Tom, if you would then state again what your governance request is. Uh, your, the hope is that you will continue to support us in our work in IB and specifically support our authorization of the ninth and 10th grade MYP authorization um, with the plans that we've talked about, making sure that courses align, looking at the possibility of introducing a specific IB health and phi ed course, um, and there'd be a letter of support that the superintendent and the board president would sign. Okay, well, we'll move that ahead. Thank you. Can I ask oh, I'm sorry. Question? <laughs> sorry. No, that's okay. I just thought of it right as Tom was talking. Um, the, there were three areas that we don't have necessarily concurrency with. That was art, design, and FIED, and health. So we only have to have six of those eight, if I read the report correctly. So um, have you looked at art or design, or you've decided? So that's also a possibility that you'll come to us with the concurrent concurrency with art or is that just scheduling do you already have it that's okay we're going to do that already in place for this fall okay so that part is i don't want to say it's easy because um, michelle has to do the work but um, it's the concept so it's easy for Tom. okay <laughs> so, so each student well has put. to be has to be in six have to have six concurrencies yeah. so they may pick and they have to have those first five are all required yeah. I think. Yeah. so we they have, have to we have several courses that can fit for a concurrent class mm -hmm. and so as long as we know which classes meet which semesters it'll, it'll you'll match, match them up, up. Yeah. yeah okay yeah. and it is course areas it's not specific courses Correct. so that that, that oh. gives you yeah, some yeah, that's helpful. Yeah. Okay. All right. anybody else thanks i'm done i also want to say that in august we have our scheduled progress monitoring report coming up on uh, international baccalaureate as well as ap uh, advanced placement courses so as the board thinks of additional questions, not that they can't be asked now, of course, they, that's a great opportunity, but if it's something that requires a little more preparation or you want to provide any guidance and what you'd like to see or know more about in the progress monitoring report, that will be coming up in August. Very good. Okay, join once, twice. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ed. Next is organizational support, and that will be facilitated by Andrew Becker. Okay, so we have no discussion items under business and finance and none under human resources. We do have uh, discussion and public comment items uh, under business and finance with the food service management policy and modifications in school food service programs rule and uh, followed by free and reduced price benefits in school food service programs policy so we'd ask at this point if there's any speakers to these items is that how it goes now no we discuss and then we, we have speakers. discuss and then mm -hmm. yes okay I mean, we have the presentation discussion and then speakers okay so, all right Lynette Zellick is joining us tonight um, regarding these policies and she's going to kick them off and uh, introduce the policies and if you have any questions all right, good evening, everyone. I am here to bring forth the two policies that um, one is with the USDA, 
that our um, Green Bay School District, that we operate under the food service program. And since we do operate under the federal and state <coughs> nutrition programs, this is a policy that we are mandated to have in our district. And we, um, we do currently do this within our district. We work with all families that have disabilities, special dietary needs, and now what USDA has asked is that now school districts have a policy in place stating exactly what you are doing. So everything that we have been putting out to all of our families within the school district, we now have a formal policy in place that um, our families can go and see with your approval. Um, our processes will still remain the same. We will work with the families. We work with the families, the school nurses, and we also get the proper documentation from the physicians. We work very closely with all the physicians also for these students, and we make sure that they are getting everything that they need with any of the meds that they are given to during the school day. And this is, um, again, I'm gonna reference back that this is mandated by USDA that we have this within our district. Um, and that would be policy 760. Are there any questions on that one? Questions? So this is largely just writing down things that practices that we've already been doing? Yes, that is correct, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. And we need to be compliant and in our administration recommendation, everything that we have in our policy bringing forward to you, we are compliant with that. Kenny? Linda, does this speak specifically to dietary needs with regard to disability? Is there something else that describes our participation through the therapy departments, the actual physical um, self-feeding programs? Mm -hmm. Do we? We work closely with that also. Okay, but do we have anything in policy? That um, with the policy, that we do when we get documentation from the, the physicians of the children, that it, if it tells us that we have, need a pureed diet, we do those. In our production kitchen, that is something that we have, um, let me see, I've been here a year and a half. Last school year, we started our pureed diets for all of those students. We don't um, no longer just blend the food that we have in our hot packs or out at the schools. Now we are making food and we have special menus for them. And we, have, we purchase molds, so they're getting a meal like you would get like if you're at the hospital or a nursing home. So we have brought our level of those foods for this, those families. Some of them are even too fed. It's like little sandcastle food. Mm -hmm. I've seen those in the, yes. the nursing home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but do we have the, the speech pathologists involved in any of, do we progress from the pureed that would, that to would, the? And I, Yes, um, that would work with the school nurses at the school and would work with them, with them, okay. with that student, okay. yes. We have a really wonderful partnership and collaboration within the food service department and all the schools. Okay. We work very close. Um, Claudia and her nursing staff, we meet with them at the beginning of the school year. We meet with the school nurses and um, it does assist and there's times that we meet with the families and the school nurses so it's do you get the occupational therapists involved with regard to adaptive utensils and things like that to to help a child self-feed with that that would be at the school level with okay. the school nurses okay, mm -hmm. okay. so the nurse yes, I think I the nurse yes. court, the school nurse coordinates all of that the occupational therapist coordinates that okay 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 thank you mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else on the 760? All right, and then up next we have the free reduced price benefits and school food services programs uh, and appeals policy and rule 761. Yes, and um, what this policy is, again, it goes back to all the information that we are putting out on our free and reduced applications that get sent out to all of our families in the district. We are just reiterating this in a policy that we are giving out to our families within the district, that we are 
making sure that all of our families within our school district are, re are getting the free and reduced application. Now, this is mandated by the Department of Public Instruction, DPI, and it, it, has, it, it involves with our free and reduced meal policy st statements that we have on file and all of our meals that we federally get subsidized from for the food service program, excuse me. Um, again, what we have to do with um, this policy, we have to make sure that we are notifying the families if they have any questions or concerns out there on their free and reduced application, what do they have to do? Who do they contact? And we do have that all outlined in the policy, and we also have that outlined in all of the free and reduced applications that get sent out to the families a paper copy and of the free and reduced applications that we have online for the families. Uh, questions on 761? Katie? Just a quick comment. I've seen many of your staff at the open houses at the beginning of the school year who are mm -hmm. very helpful in encouraging families mm -hmm. to, to fill out the yeah. applications. Thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. And this, again, I'm, I'm assuming we're we already have procedures to work yes. out if and we're if there when there's questions or concerns mm -hmm. about should they have qualified should they have not qualified this is just getting it down in in writing to meet the requirement for policy that is correct we have had an appeal okay. uh, since mm -hmm. I've been here we have had an appeal and this is the process we followed mm -hmm. okay one appeal one appeal of a denial of a free and reduced application all the years I worked there, just I can't, I can't think of a time there where there's been a, a, anything denied. Mm -hmm. it. It's more we're trying to reach out when you mm -hmm. believe that you know the qualifications mm -hmm. are there. So there, there's very specific grounds when um, families are not able to uh, validate their income levels as to when the government requires a denial of a free and reduced application, and unfortunately, this fell within those requirements. And it, it was a difficult case, but we were required by the law to deny it and they do not give you wiggle room no. with respect to when they don't meet the requirements of um, not denying those, those applications. Well then can that be, can eligibility be restored once you have the documents that you need? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But you're not allowed to waive the amounts that they incurred when they were not eligible. For the, for the You're not allowed to backwards pay. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, then that will uh, conclude the two food service. I know it then now, is there any public comment? Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there any public comment on these items? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Lynette. Thanks, Lynette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And then um, human resources. We have four um, four items all related to IT. Okay. Excuse me, Jean, you need a microphone. They're not picking you up. Thank you. I'll, I'll start over. Um, we have four job descriptions that are coming before the board for approval and discussion. Discussion and then approval next um, at the next board meeting. And the result of re reorganization that Diane Dersh and Stacey Williams have done uh, in their department. We've had um, four retirements in IT. And so this is a good time to take a look at the roles and responsibilities of the positions, which they have done. And so they'll step you through some of the uh, major changes uh, in, the, in the roles and the rationale behind them. And then if you have questions specifically about the salary and compensation, I can certainly address that. Well, thank you very much um, this evening for um, um, listening and hearing about the job descriptions as we proceed with um, some reorganization within our department. I have with me Stacy Williams, who is our student information system administrator, and she supervises uh, the safe delivery of students 
uh, help desk, the data quality reporting specialists, the enrollment specialists, central registration, and identity and access management. Now those titles I gave you were the old titles. Um, I have been here now with our district now for five years. I came in 2013. And many things have changed since then. And because of that, uh, we've needed to reorganize to meet the needs of our users. We want to build efficiencies, first of all, take away redundancies, um, and also to be fiscally responsible. And so these things that we're bringing before you are actually money saving, uh, and we are eliminating some things but adding others. And so um, here's, here are just some examples of some of the needs that, that have changed in the time that I have been here. Uh, first of all, you've heard me talk about a, a, a data warehouse. And we have programmers uh, who, uh, up to this point, have built many reports. And their jobs have been to extract the data and to share that information forward. Uh, now that we're moving to uh, a data warehouse and dashboards that our people can use, there's a need for less reports. Um, we have more devices than ever. When I came here uh, in 2013, we estimate there were about 15,000 devices, and I'm talking desktop computers, portable computers, etc. Uh, in our last count through our asset management system, which we have upgraded, uh, we've got 31,743 devices. Now, I'm not just talking computers. I'm also talking things like Apple TVs. I'm talking about Kajits, and those are the cellular uh, wireless devices that allow our kids <coughs> to get online from home. So we've over doubled the inventory of things, of hardware that we're taking care of. We've also, um, can I say, made things more efficient by using things like mobile device management, by centralizing things as well, so when we have services, they come to a central place so that uh, things are more standardized and we have systems in place for that. And you know, you've, you know that we've got students and teachers who are going one-to-one. -one. That means one device per student at our secondary level. Some of them are being taken home, in fact. Uh, and so there are needs regarding troubleshooting and hardware and software support as well. So those are some of the big reasons why um, we've had to retool as time goes on. Uh, and so five years have gone by. We've worked on filling gaps. We've worked on changing some and adding to and subtracting some things. Um, and that's what our job descriptions are are talking about here. And so I know that you received the job descriptions in your board packet, and so I'm wondering now if you have any questions about those specific job descriptions. Questions? Rhonda? We didn't receive any um, salary information in Neptune. In it was just in a, in a letter. Is there a reason for that? In the past, this is what we've done. We've um, provided it to the board, and then when you vote on the positions, that when you when they're posted and the motions are posted, the salary ranges will be in there. So it's arranged. Is this a discussion that happens at some point? Oh. They're discussed with me. I run them through a lens of internal and external comps, and also equity in terms of internal equity. And um, so we decided to, based on the job titles what they should be, we look at the market, and then look at internally how they look at other positions. So what we've done is the help desk, the technicians, the two technicians, are um, based at $44,408 in their uh, hourly position, so they would get overtime if they worked overtime, which seems to be what a help desk position with the additional responsibilities added to these, and you can speak to what those are, would, would be paid. Um, and then the, pos the, the, the positions uh, which are salaried are actually reductions from current positions to retirees leaving, and they are being placed at the lowest pay grade of our salary structure uh, for our 
administrator, manager, technical um, exempt people. It's a, that we call it, you've seen it before, but it's a level 16, which is the lowest range, which is what was provided to the board. And that range uh, starts at uh, 44,974 and goes up to the top of the scale is 52,295. There's 2% increases until you max maximize the scale. Um, Diane, I'm going to ask if you would. We, we did receive the job descriptions, and I realize they are there on, on uh, Neptune for people to see, but mm -hmm. would you mind with the four positions kind of just giving a synopsis of what are they doing? What, what do these jobs do? A like help desk technician, what, is, sure. what do they do? What is a technology acquisition? Right. What do they do? And then you also mentioned um, some shifting, some reorganization, restructuring. What, what are they replacing? Right. If you wouldn't mind going, you know, with each of the four. Certainly, things. yes, and we can go right down the line. Uh, first, with our help desk technician. We originally had two technician, or, or help desk people, and then we scaled back to one but we found that we're in need of two. Uh, people uh, have immediate needs, and so when they call help desk, they need to have problems solved. And so uh, we found that as time has gone on with more technology being involved, we actually needed to upgrade that to a technician. It was more than just the triage of, oh, well, that sounds like a network issue. I'm going to contact, you know, I'll have you or I'll find out the problem and contact the network um, technician. Now we're actually asking for more critical thinking, problem solving, uh, technical skills at that technician level. Stacy, do you want to add on about right. that? Um, they do a lot of technical things like um, they remote into someone's computer and try to help troubleshoot. They also will go up to any of the conference rooms and assist when needed. Um, they do synchronizing of accounts. They um, also create Active Directory accounts. If someone's disabled, they'll fix that account for them. Um, upload student, student and staff photos into our student information system. So there's a lot of technical things that the help desk does. Okay, and this, this is a resource for staff. Staff and parents as well, because that's another thing I didn't mention. We have, through Infinite Campus, our parent portal, and we've got 67% of our households having accounts within our parent portal. And so now we've got parents calling in as well, saying, how do I access my students' grades? I've forgotten my password, those types of things. And so for one person to try to handle all those calls, it gets pretty difficult sometimes. So we're saying for that position, you're talking two people? Is that what you're saying? Right. Back yes. in 2016, unfortunately, both of our help desk people left on the same day. And then at that time, we were able to replace one, and the other one was put on hold. And after a year and a half, we've realized we do need coverage with two people. Okay, okay so um, that's a help desk technician. Yes. So when parents call in, are they calling directly to the help desk? Yes. Is that, yes. mm -hmm. and they know how to do that? How do they know how to do that? How do it's, they know that, that that's what they're supposed to do? It's published in many places on our website. If you log on to the parent portal login screen, it says contact the help desk. And that brings up a good point. A lot of different departments are using the help desk as their resource. If they have any questions, they say please contact the help desk. So the volume of calls has really increased. If we have parents who want to see their child's assessment scores and things like that, we have that within Infinite Campus. And so um, that's where they would be directed as well. Um, the next one is uh, the acquisition technician and uh, this one is part of that second help desk position as well. Um, we kind of have um, them divided out into two separate niches uh, and so what we are finding is that schools are purchasing more items independently. Um, as I sit at this table and we hear about the different programs going on, for instance, our um, 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 WICWIAC uh, had a, a few years ago said we want to purchase a trail cam 
because we're an outdoor learning school and so you know and, and so it's our team who reviews all those things and then we help with the purchasing and we do that because then we can centralize where the purchasing comes from we have um, relationships with vendors so that helps us uh, we follow all purchasing uh, guidelines and things and so um, we have found that we've got many schools who have these individual needs that need very specific ordering and so having someone from the Department of Technology help with that situation um, takes a long time first of all uh, and having somebody um, follow through with the steps and coordinate with our Department of Technology to make that sure that the technology is compatible uh, that is purchased that's compatible with our network and system is very important and so our, our acquisition technician would be the person who helps us with the, the software acquisition process as well as our uh, technology acquisition process. For software, it may sound not a big deal to purchase software <laughs> as well, but there are a lot of things regarding compatibility with our system, student data privacy and security, um, and, they're in, and first of all, is it relevant and useful for teaching and learning, right? And so uh, this is a process, again, that um, our acquisition technician would assist with. They also would support, uh, they would uh, be tech support for School Messenger. Uh, they work on shared drives, just like you have a Board of Education shared drive. We have many of those within our district, and so this person would help manage who's within those groups. Active Directory and Identity Management is another thing that they work with. Um, and again, as Stacia talked about, a lot of account resets where we have to um, you know, re-engage people uh, because maybe they've been end dated and so we have to um, go in and reactivate accounts. Anything else you'd want to add with that? Um, I think this position would also be helping with the batch scans for Project Doc. Um, Project Doc is our digital, um, our cumulative digital files and there's batch scans that need to be manually pushed through. So this, this position will also assist with that. The purchasing that Diane is referring to is actually being taken from one of the other positions and put onto this one. And we'll get to that one next. Okay, right. This is one position? One position, yes. Okay, a user directory. Oh, Diane. oh sorry. Yes. So you're the help. The help desk technician is one person, and then this technology acquisition technician is the second help yep. desk person? Yes. So right. the help desk person is just one person, then. Right. And this other one is one person. And they'll, the oh, two of them make up the help desk team. Two is two. Yeah, right. But they and split them, yeah. I, I've heard that. Thank you for that too, clarification. So, sure yes. yeah. so we're talking about two people, not three people. Two well, people. Correct. Two people, but one is already there. Right. Zach Allen is our help desk technician currently. And then this technology acquisition technician would sit right next to him at the help desk. It's the, the unfilled position. Okay. So that would be like a, like a help desk two plus a lot of the purchasing responsibilities? Or would they be of about equal technical level but one would have more purchasing responsibilities? They'll be at an equal level and they'll each have <laughs> focuses, different focuses that they're responsible for. Yet they'll be cross-trained. So we aren't in a bind when someone is gone or leaves. Is, is two enough for an organization of this size? Well, two this, for frontline help desks? It would be with the um, backup of the user directory coordinator, which is the next position. They all reside in the same room, and in fact, Stacy is in that room too, and so she's ended up as help desk at times. So I pick calls up too if they're not able to get to it. But you're very right regarding help desk because we have people in classrooms or parents with immediate needs, and so being able to act on those as soon as we can is pretty essential to this. And we currently have our programmers wrote a program where if Zach can't get to his phone 
if he's already on it and there's a call coming in, they have it routed directly into it, our ticketing system. So this will really help having another person to have a live call. Okay, so our next position is the user directory coordinator. And this is um, something that we develop. What about the enrollment specialist? specialist? Oh, okay. Well, I'll. Can, this one kind of feeds. It you go back to enrollment specialist? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. There's right. What, we're, we're going through it in this way because, again, this person is like the next person who settles uh, or who backs up the help desk. So the user directory coordinator um, is, is something that our Jean Rohr had done in the past, and she is retiring. And so this is where we took the opportunity to retool some things. Um, again, she, she works with the groups within, um, within our, our user, users, and it helps keep everybody organized so that um, when Active Directory helps to, um, you know, get people into different accesses, the proper names are where they need to be. So people have the accesses to the stuff they need, in other words. Um, so what, what this position will do is help with the parent accounts. And then we've got student teachers and interns now who also have accounts. And that's something in 2013 that we, I don't think we had. They didn't have fact. access to Infinite Campus. Right. So we've got more and more people with access to our system and to Infinite Campus. We've got GED programs uh, that are, are um, in progress right now, and they also have accounts. They have correct? network accounts. So that they can access, um, yes, the internet and other things within our school district. We have community partners, and those are, uh, we've got many groups of community partners, uh, like Future Phoenix and others, and so again, providing access to those different um, people who rotate in and out of the different programs is a full-time job right there, because we've got new additions, and then others we need to turn off. Um, they also uh, would help with open enrollment changes, uh, so that when information is needed, they can, they can help with um, the enrollment specialist and getting the data there. Uh, something we didn't have in 23 as much as we're using now is Google. We just started in 2013 with the Google process and, and adapting Google, and now we've got many Google uh, administrator groups that um, this person would help with. And then another thing is that they would manage staff and student photos. That's another thing that we had not done in the past. Uh, before 2013, we had not taken the school CDs and uploaded them uh, centrally into our infinite campus system. So those are some of the tasks then that, that go with the uh, user directory Sounds coordinator. Like, kind of like a head librarian, archivist, curator position for all the Digital. Things that are entered into the system. Huh? Yes, yeah. yeah, because if you think about all the digital resources now that our students use and our teachers use, they're all assigned to user accounts. And so we have to make sure that we've always got those things working in the right way and the person in the right group so they have access to stuff. Uh, and so that is how this person helps us out. I know how valuable Jean Rohr has been. She has been very valuable. Okay, so that is the user directory coordinator. And then the last one is our enrollment specialist. And um, this, this was, is held by Jenny Vandenplas mm -hmm. now, who is retiring uh, at the end of, of this year. And so what we've done already, we've done some modifications here because um, Stacy has taken over the supervision of central registration. Uh, so some of the supervisory roles are off that, that old role. Um, but the main focus of the enrollment specialist would be 
intradistrict transfers and the, the family follow-up with that as well as um, open enrollment so that we've got our numbers more at our disposal regarding what do things look like, what does the forecast look like, what's happened, what hasn't happened, what do we need to do. Um, and again, our goal is to make sure that the reporting is up to date and um, at your fingertips uh, when, when you ask those kinds of questions. Um, other things that we have a need for that we are putting into this is that we need a, a systemic way to train our clericals. Instead of just on an as-needed as basis on how to use Infinite Campus, we need to have a systemic uh, professional learning um, uh, plan for them, and this person would help with the training of our clericals for this. Um, and so. Another thing that this person would do is help move students from our current year within our system to the upcoming year. So that's called rolling students. I told Stacy people aren't going to understand rolling students forward. So it's just moving them to the, to the next school year. Um, maintain tracking of voucher students. And so again, you know, we don't know specifically who the students are, but we can keep numbers. Correct, Stacy? And then um, something that is new is, again, because things are centralized uh, at the state level now, um, there's a system called the EDFI data structure, and each student has their own state ID. And that's something that was not around in 2013, um, that now uh, we have centralized and statewide. And so having someone on top of that um, and helping with those things is something that is still pretty new and we need a liaison to the Department of Public Instruction because it's pretty new. We're still working some things out. Stacy, is there anything more you want to add to those? No, just with the enrollment specialist, um, I, this is going to be part of central registration and this person will also take on the tasks as the other registrars do as well. Because open enrollment is not a an all-year thing it comes in spurts so this person will also back up center registration we have a focus on cross training we have a focus on filling the gaps and building a team to help solve problems it just does not reside with one person and that's something that uh, is building more efficiencies within our department as well Other questions? Yes, um, not, not specific to these, um, to just these positions, but more um, conceptually, and we, we talked about this, Gene, I, th I think at, at one time, uh, perhaps the practice of coming forward, talking about a position in week one, and then having salary provided in, the, in an email or the green letter before there was email, and then coming forward with the salary recommendation um, on the agenda later. That purpose may have served us well some time ago, but I think there, with increased public interest, which is a, a good thing, um, unless there would be a situation where the we want to talk about a position and you, we don't know yet where the salary should be, um, can we get that just put on the committee agendas? We could actually put it right on the job description as a, you know, and they're, they're labeled draft, I mean, they're really a draft form until the board actually approves them because they could change. Um, but we could actually just write the salary uh, range or hourly rate across the top of the new job description and then that would be part of what's put out. Well, I think though the, um, <coughs> don't we, I, I would, and that's, that's good. Um, I, I guess I'd like, you know, people may just want an overview. The, the example I used is maybe hypothetically if we were going to pay a level one, you know, we're, we're certainly paying fair, <coughs> this is actually beyond what I would call a, we probably don't have anybody would call a level one help desk. These would probably be a, one step above that um, anyways, but if, if we were to pay our entry level help desk technicians $80,000. That would be something where a lot of public might want to come in and have a chat with us about it. 
where since we're not, since we're bringing them up to a fair market pay, it's unlikely. But someone who just looked at the agenda and without having to look at, you know, dig into the supplementary, I'd like them to be able to see it. And we, we do that. It's the same thing we do with principals or, or administrators anyways. So this wouldn't really change much, right? Well, when we bring a new, when we brought the new job description forward, we've not ever provided the rates on the job description. But are you talking about maybe a chart where you see the old position and then the new position? Well, <coughs> I mean, the recommendation, for, for example, um, okay, so you're, you're going in, in three weeks, there's going to be a recommended motion for help desk position job description with an hourly pay of? Yes. Okay. So couldn't we just have it right on the agenda, help, help desk technician job description and pay parentheses? Oh, do you mean right on the, on the well, isn't, doesn't that the match? discussion? Sure. Yeah, because right. Yeah we, could, yeah, we could put it right here on the, um, the agenda. Just, I think, right up, right up front because then people uh, sure. don't have to look through a secondary document. And again, I think if, if anything, it might be, you know, I think some people might want to just be checking to make yeah. sure that we're we're reasonable and within the it, market. It, it, and yeah. also, also possibly, if the last time we did help desk technicians, I think you know, we, what well, we offer a good benefits package. You know, we weren't we weren't where the market needed to be for those positions in the mm -hmm. seventeen twenty five range. You wouldn't be able to keep someone uh, at that except the very entry level. So right. maybe we've had the, someone in the public come talk to us about that. So just mm -hmm. it's just getting everything up front mm -hmm. so yeah, people, and, and also we have, we have more public comment at the first meeting and not just sure. the third meeting now too, so. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. We, can, we can do that easily. Mm -hmm. Rhonda? Um, are these typically 12 month? I know you said you changed some things around, but instead of a two year contract, um, why the 12 month? Actually, the, the two hourly positions won't get a contract. None of these actually will get a contract. So um, they're not at the level of an administrator, so they don't need to be issued contracts at all. Rhonda, I think what they're referring to when they say 12 months is that it's not yeah. a 10 or 11 month, like are some of our principals and teachers. It, okay. it, it they're works, just saying yes. that they work year okay. round. Yes, that's what it means. Okay. So I have one more question. So there's four, you had four retirements, there's four um, positions that have been put forth, but you say there's a savings. Can you walk through what that, why there's a savings even though it's four and four? Sure, um, the people retiring uh, were at the end of their, their pay grade as well. Uh, and so now as we're bringing in, we've actually retooled because the, the jobs are, um, are distributed a little better and so that's why the salary grade of, of 16 is mm -hmm. that yes um, it moved from 13 to 16 15 to 15 six. two of the positions that are retiring moved from group 13 to group 16 so the mm -hmm. lower the number of the group the more the salary is mm -hmm. so they moved up into a different group so the pay range is less than what the other pay range was and then one of the positions, um, the, our land manager, which that position is now going to be the user group, what do we call it? User directory coordinator, is moving from group 15 to group 16. Just to be clear, the, um, the one position, if the board would approve it, the help desk technician, is currently staffed with Zach, mm -hmm. as you re referred to his name. And that will be an uh, increase in pay for him. He's staying in place, so he's not affected by the retirement. But it's part of the restructuring to bring into um, equity the help desk position itself. There is a fourth retirement which will come to the board um, at your regular board meeting, and <coughs> that, that is not affected by these jobs. But there are four retirements in total in IT. And when will we have that information about his increase and what that looks like? That will come in the, that came to you in, in, in the in there? update. And then the, um, it, when you vote on it, it will be specific in that motion. 
Actually, th these the technician will be on the consent agenda because it's not management. It'll, it's an mm -hmm. hourly position. So you'll see it on the consent agenda, the name of the person, the old salary or the current salary, and then the new salary. So he'll be getting some support, though, in his job, right? I mean, yes. we're adding people. Yes, that's why they're having two. One is not right. infield, two, two help desk people. Okay. Which, you know, really, as you point out, two for an organization of our size with the people outside of our employees that we serve. Well, 67% uh, yeah. of our families, yes, have parent portals. For good customers. Yeah, because I was in a, I mean, I my situation is, um, I'm in a bigger company now, but the, I was in a, you know, a um, nonprofit situation, which certainly not nearly as many layers of IT, but we had we had basically three techs and a manager supporting 400, and that kept three techs and a manager quite busy enough. So, yes, um, and it's it's really good to hear. Um, it's important. I, I I I was pretty sure that we were doing this right, but it's important. It's important to hear that we'll have a, a supervisor um, be on the phones when they start backing up. Because mm -hmm. that's, some places maybe supervisor would just be, you know, supervising and doing boss stuff, but the, you know, backing up those phones is, is important and, and tickets. How many tickets do we have at a given time typically? I would have to run a report, I don't know okay. offhand. He does a pretty good job at getting them cleared out within 24 hours okay. by himself so far. All right. uh, anything else? Okay, so that, um, and then any public comment or discussion on any of these four? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And then that, uh, that concludes organizational support. Um, except you have a German into closed session in the back. Okay. So I'm, um, so basically whoever is, um, whoever's organizational support always will, will have this one now? Yes. This, this, this piece here? All right. That was okay. I can handle it. All right. So I move that the board convene in closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statute 1985-1E deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, investing in public funds, or conducting <coughs> other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session, more specifically to wit negotiate on collective bargaining agreements and pursuant to Wisconsin statute 1985-1C concerning employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility to wit employee compensation pursuant to a statute, uh, Wisconsin statute 1985-1C concerning employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercise of responsibility and pursuant to Wisconsin statute 1985-1F considering financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems or the investigation of charges against specific persons except where paragraph B applies, which if discussed in public would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or uh, data or involved in such problems or investigations. To wit, personnel matters pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 1985-1E, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, investing in public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session, more spe specifically to wit contracts regarding city, county, district, shared land and services, and contract regarding organizational analysis study. Pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 1985-1G, conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation which is, is or is likely to become involved to it potential litigation manager a matter and pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 1985-1F, considering financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems or the investigative investigation of charges against specific persons, except where paragraph B applies, which if discussed in public would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data or involved in such problems or investigations. To it, student disciplinary matter. 
meeting will begin an open session to consider the appropriate motion for a closed session so provided by law, which is why Second. it has moved. Sandy? Becker? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Maloney? Aye. McCoy? Aye. You have been watching the Green Bay Area Public School District's Board of Education meeting. Please visit the school district's website, www.gbaps.org, to view the program again. If you cannot fully access the information on this video, please let us know the accessibility issue you are having by calling 920-448-248. 2025 or by email at communications at gbaps.org. We will try to provide the information to you in an alternative format and or make the necessary improvements to make the information accessible.